Hi everyone, this is Artwork by Dutch. Welcome to my channel. Uh, so what I'm doing here is uh, going to show how to use some flatting. It's going to be a little different than you've probably learned from <clears throat> the Clip Studio Paint, Graphicsly, and others on how to flat using the reference icon as well as utilizing many of the functionalities within Clip. One thing that I'm doing is as a professional comic book flat colorist, uh, I like to have the same kind of functionality I have in Photoshop over in Clip Studio Paint, so I want all my colors butting up together. And yes, it does make it easier to go ahead and just click and fill in, but you know, sometimes you have those uh, little pixelations around the black lines, and it doesn't bother me too much. Um, but if you were to do this and send this off to a another colorist uh, down the line, they might take issue with it. Um, but I also find too that just use, utilizing this functionality uh, really works. So what I'm doing here is I'm going to be starting a pre-launch campaign for my first issue of the Wayfair, and I drew this promo poster of it with uh, the three kind of three main characters, uh, Amya, who's the girl on the skateboard, and uh, Zhao, who's on the scooter, and Moko, who's the flying creature in the upper left hand there. So I have this set to fill. Uh, basically, I originally had everything set to a transparency layer and set the opacity to it. Threw it in the layer. Originally, I had done this all, and I, unfortunately, I had the logo in the wrong spot, so I repositioned it and um, able to get that on there. And afterwards, uh, I just started to come in and do my flats. And when you're doing the flats, you typically want to work from the background to foreground. But as always, there's a you know, there's always a caveat. There's always something that's going to change that little rule because sometimes if you work foreground to background maybe it's because it's a, a, a comic book panel for example if you have the main character there and he's taking up uh, say it's Batman for example he's taking up a good portion of the panel but there's two henchmen in the lower corner there by isolating Batman um, I can then go and start to color the last two guys uh, cutting in or if Batman's in the middle of the panel um, I can just do that so one thing that I have do that I'm doing right now is I have a lasso set uh, with anti-aliasing and a couple of different settings ready as well as my paint fill bucket and I'll show you what that looks like so the effect I'm going for here is all my colors butting up together. You know, so all these colors are all butting up. There's no anti-aliasing. Uh, there's no pixelation because it's filling in from the lines. And for me, I just like seeing that. Um, right now, I am transitioning from utilizing Photoshop for. I used to use it for coloring my own comic and everything else in there, but I'm now trying to utilize Clip Studio Paint more often, but I do like the functionality of Clip or Photoshop in how it operates. And as I've mentioned, the one thing that they really need to work on Clip is uh, getting a functional lasso like that in Photoshop so uh, it can easily switch from a freehand uh, to a magnetic or polyline and vice versa, just really quickly being able to do that. Uh, but I've got it also set my lasso to continuously add to the selection. And this does take a little time, but it's time that's going to be well worth it. So right now, when you're flatting, you're just choosing selectable colors, okay? Um, uh, unless you have a client or a cu customer that you're working with that has a specific palette, that they've already set up, then you want to follow that 
for those colors but if you're just doing a background like this I'm just gonna come in here I'm gonna show you I'm just gonna grab my flat lasso I've also have a flat polyline set up as well maybe we'll go to that just to show I will go between the two of these and here I am I'm going into those other colors and I've got my paint bucket, and I'm just going to drop that color in. And I see there's some areas there I missed from the previous. Uh, unfortunately, the way the coloring is set up, I have to go and quickly make some quick adjustments here. But I can paint in that mountain color. And that's what's missing here, that's why that kind of went in. So I'm going to go grab this, just manually fill it in. That way. And then I can just plop in that color. And if we want to check, everything is smack dab against each other. And we'll just keep doing that. And what I'll do later on is I'll go through with my, now that I've got all the colors selected, or a color, for example, if I want to do this building later on and change how it looks, I can adjust the hue, utilizing the hue and saturation to go and make that change. So this is, you know, yeah, it may take a little bit a little bit longer, but there's at times, if you, and you've probably all experienced it, if you're using the fill, you drop in the color, and then there's still areas it's not filling in because maybe the area you're trying to fill in is closed off, and um, you're then quickly trying to fill that. You grab the, let's see, what are the, you grab the close and fill flat area but it still doesn't close and then you grab the paint and uh, the close and fill uh, the, unfill, the paint unfilled area and it still doesn't close up so you're still spending time doing this but here I'm just quickly just selecting my areas because I've taken care of this background I can just now work from the foreground this mid foreground back with my selection and I have to make sure I turn off my lasso, deselect the area. See now I'm just quickly just whipping right through this. And I'm not going to be too picky on a lot of this. Again, as a flatter your job is to fill in with selectable colors. Um, you can, as you gain more experience and you start to see what the mood is with um, a flat uh, or a comic page, as I often do, you can see where there's an excitement, you know, action page going on. And when the, you have that action page going on, then you quickly uh, can choose a different color to go in there. So if it's, you know, uh, energy scene, like somebody's firing a gun, uh, you quickly <clears throat> can set that to maybe a red or an orange burst color or yellow. If it's moody and everything, maybe a saturated blue or purple, that would work. So we'll just keep making, oh, thought I made a selection there, but I did not. And usually, <coughs> One thing I'll do later on here is try to determine, you know, where I want the area of focus to be. And a lot of these colors I'm laying down, they may get uh, either a layer thrown above to push it back in the foreground because they're further out. And I want to bring it with that atmospheric perspective. Uh, it gets cooler as it goes back, it recedes, and warmer as things move forward towards your eye. And that's what we'll have here.
So now I can move into more of this mid-ground. And yeah, I'm not being very neat or clean, but I'm aiming right down the middle. And I really would give that advice to you if you're going to become a flatter or flat your own work. Um, aim towards the middle line or towards the edge, uh, inside edge, and that will help. Get it in, and a lot of things I'm seeing here, I can just come back later on and you know, correct, make a correction on. But I'll do it right now. I don't like using the pen tool as often, or a brush. Um, I've had many flats I've had to correct um, because the client had gone with another flatter, and they ended up using Clip Studio Paint and thought they could just drop in everything and then for certain areas just because it like this area for example I've got my logo they could just pencil in or use a pen and just quickly fill that in and what ends up going what ends up happening is it just looks horrible <laughs> um, <clears throat> and not very professional you know because uh, the next person along the line uh, used to seeing them a certain way So I could have, right now, just used the poly line, and I probably will switch to that here. And let's choose another color, and I'll just drop it in color, moving on. Um, I do see an area there I do need to work on real quick. But Easy to rectify. Oop. You have to make sure you connect those lines together. And I know I could be hitting the... I'm in the color history right now. One thing I'm not doing though is the main characters uh, of the comic because I actually created a color set for them and that actually is a video I will be showing here once I've edited next week. Quick tutorial on that. I really wanted to create a color set for my characters so that way when I do have other artists drawing them for this Kickstarter I can send them the color palette and they can go from there. Utilizing the new functions in Clip. And there's little areas here yeah, I'm going to go through and you know, definitely have to modify those. But right now I'm just trying to drop these in. As fast as possible. Usually I like using the, the regular lasso, uh, the marquee. Because polyline, like you've noticed, um, there are some issues with the... Uh, oops, I'm still in paint. There are some issues with you know, having to connect the dots and everything. So, I see. Quickly fill this in. Turn that down. This is one of the things I enjoy doing. This is why I get a lot of clients repeating business with me. It's just the ability of getting the flats done. Now I don't do theirs in Clip. I do use Photoshop for that, but um, very versatile tool. So I'm 
I'm just quickly going in. I'm pressing down as hard as I can because I want the same color throughout. That's the other reason why I don't like utilizing the pen because if my pen pressure is set to low and uh, opacity has been manipulated on the brush I'm using, when I go then to go select these colors to start to render them, what might happen is the colors won't be selected and then I'm going to be up a creek. I'll have to try to figure out how to make that work. All right, let's try to quickly put that into this desaturated color. Let's zoom in here. Uh, undo that. Then go out and just continue on. If you can see, there's a plus. icon there. That's just uh, adding and I, once I make a selection and drop it in those areas will be filled in. I mean, quick and simple. And we'll do the same thing for down here. Oh, when you're dealing with curves you just have to make smaller lines. selections. And if areas you missed, right now the autosave is on. Let's come back in because my last is set to add. And I can add in those areas. And I can come up here and do the same thing. And here's what I was talking about. These lines are pretty thin so I'm just trying to skirt around the outside middle of the line art as much as possible. Only thing I don't like about this is that I'm left-handed. This is why I really would love for Clip Studio Paint to create a lasso where um, in Photoshop I can hold down the, I believe, Option and Shift key, and then I can pick this up and it becomes a polyline. So then I can see what's going on under my hand here. And even though I have the add, I could just stop. I could have added that in. Uh, still some adjustments to be made on my part, but. You know, I'm just going through this. Let's see, there's an area I missed here. So just adding. And I like this again because we're doing, we're adding all the same colors. So when it comes to selecting these colors, and I choose my magic wand, all those colors are going to be selected. And now I can go and move forward here. All right, I do see that I'm probably going to have to kick back this a little bit. And we can set this to a another color. And then the same thing I can come back. I can run right through those colors there. And I can just come back to my original point or go outside. Outside in. Same thing. The other part with their marquees, if you are making a selection and you zigzag, it, these areas here that are totally closed will get filled in with color, and these areas that are not will, won't get filled. In Photoshop, if I did this squiggle, it would select the whole thing as a big blob. So there's still some adjustment to be made. But I'm just going to go and select some more this area. Grab the polyline. i just add to this. See, and the other part here about this polyline is it doesn't allow me to make big selections like that. Or small ones. I've got to do some manipulating to connect it all. But once it's connected, 
looks like I put some of the same color down there. So let's grab bar, holding down the Option or Alt on my Mac will give me a negative. Oh, there we go. There's a negative symbol, and I can just go ahead and cut that back and fill. Oops. choose a little lighter color it's a little too dark there there we go and this is also supposed to be selected just coming in with my pen tool quickly adjusting check the wand and all that should be selected. Come in, let's drop in another, let's go a little green. Again, we're just dropping in colors, and once we drop those colors in, again, if you're working background to foreground, it makes it easier to select those foreground colors. And drop in some more. And again, as I said, we're just making it selectable colors for the building. They're, they're all going to get changed, and I'm going to have a color palette I'm going to try and use. Uh, create that in Photoshop or in, sorry, Pinterest, and then bring that over so I have at least an idea what this might look like. Yeah, well, we've been doing this 23 minutes, and it's going by pretty quick. Care if we go around the skateboard. This is where that polyline would have definitely come in handy. Or the ability of having this regular lasso and then being able to just hold on shift and create. A or switch between a magnetic and poly would have helped. And then just do a little clean up here. So this is why I prefer. Photoshop's tool functionality, um, but I'm again trying to use one tool. So the Wayfair pre-launch, I'm aiming for August here. So the first issue, I've actually just gone through, did some editing to it, recoloring, and Recoloring it as well as um, doing the lettering, make it a little nicer, uh, changing it up just a bit. But I'm also going to do some additional things. So, those people who uh, support the Kickstarter, um, I'm also going to do a director's cut, just adding on not to the comic but additional pages. How panels originally I mentioned in my mind how it would look and um, you know, I'm not going to make a change to the actual comic itself, adding those in, but I just wanted to show that this is what I originally planned it to look. Uh, there's some funny scenes in there that I really, really wanted to, to have, but I just at the time didn't have the skill or 
the ability to add those right. So I'm going to add that in there and we're going to have some fun and have some great artists lined up to doing some alternate covers for that. So there we go. I have now gotten the majority of the flat done, and yeah, more, more, some parts of it I had started earlier, but um, you know, I probably still finished it within a half hour of doing that. So like Scotty, I'm a kind of a miracle worker when it comes to flatting. I always tell people the time and then of course you try to shave off a half hour or so and get it back to them are you know usually surprised at how fast it was done and how well it was done so they will um, quickly want me to do some more work for them So I just filling in some areas here between, uh, this is Sao, so just uh, pick a color, see if I use the other tools, um, I would probably have to click around a few times and then do some other fills. I also think too the reason why I probably am becoming a better illustrator is because of flatting um, because I have to basically I'm tracing over somebody else's work and it's developing my hand stamina um, my eye coordination on it but before I don't think I could draw as often but once I started flatting I was I was doing it for quite some time. You know, now I'm able to go, and I don't have a lot of hand cramps or anything like that, like some do. So I think it helped conditioned. So I made a mistake there, negative one, easy to fix, get rid of it. Switches back over automatically once you let go of Option or Alt to the. Add this little technique I learned from Color by Kurt. Oh, that's actually part of this, the backpack of just selecting and going. But that really did help um, when you learn from others in the field. I always ask other colorists that I work with. Uh, that's typically who I do a lot of work for as uh, artists who are colorists. Um, Sheldon Robertson, Mark Brooks, and I will do the flat and then they'll, I'll ask them you know, how they did something or what this technique is, etc. And they'll, what kind of brush they use, and you know, we talk shop. So it's a lot of fun. Alright, so yeah, I made some big sweeping. Quickly clean up these outer edges. Oh, they're still selected. And this I'm just using the pen tool to quickly lay that in. And pretty much done here with the background. I'm going to go through now and
quickly paint in these trees. So it gives the impression of a tree or a forest in this area. And I don't have a name for the city yet. Um, but I do think this is where the final big bad breakdown is going to happen. So what I did there is I actually just chose my flatting fill to um, fill bucket because I started going into these other areas and just dropped in the color. And we're good. And there's still some areas I need to go through with the polyline and uh, flap. That's, you know, nitpicky stuff. Let's get to the colors. Now I'm going to go to my color set and I've got my Wayfarer chosen and I have it set to the labels of everybody's outfits flat base colors the only thing I didn't grab was Zhao's boots so I'm going to have to do that and that was actually in the second issue as well as the scooter so I'm going to have to get that but see I'm dropping that in and Moving on. This is Vest. So I'm just hovering over just to check. It should pop up. I think that did say Vest. Yep, it's not as fast as I thought it was or would be. Same thing as before, working outside in, dropping the color. See any places I missed. realize there's supposed to be a circle on his vest here and I did not add that in so I'll have to do that later everybody's weekends going well. I've been trying to get back in the groove of thinking. I've seen a lot of conventions starting back up. Uh, been invited to a few in the Arizona area that I was thinking about doing, but I realized that I have nothing new since 20... I was supposed to have some new stuff in 2020, but then with COVID I just nothing was going on so I didn't do any prints and ended up instead just working on the comic and writing the Demon Hunter series. Come on. That one does not have a scarf shirt. So I'll figure out what the color that one was. Because I have it set to add, I can just go out and start making bigger strokes and selections here. Fill them in. Does it on both sides. Let's set Zhao's boots. I know it's a uh, brown. Let's set it at the moment. I'll 
change it as we go along. Now well, it's not that we have more desaturated than anything else. And we're going to choose a scarf, get that put in. And the last thing we'll do is a skin. And here, that was the skin color. Yeah, these just need to pop up just a bit faster, more responsive, but. Try to have some fun with this poster. I actually go and actually color his hair. I've cut outside of the mountain there, so just deselect that area or remove it. Drop it in. Let's grab his hair color. Alright, come zoom in. So yeah, so the Wayfarer is actually starting to pick up here. Uh, we're still in the process of finishing up the fourth issue coloring. Uh, for which I have a lot of personal issues coming up, so I have to take care of that first. I'm going to choose a little gray. I'm going to go in and Fill in his mouth. The one cool other part that's kind of funny with the clip is you actually have to click in the selected area. In Photoshop, if the color is this similar, you can just click on that. And it'll automatically fill in. Else, I think that's pretty strange. So, if, for example, in Photoshop, if I was going to fill this, it would just click on it here, and it would automatically fill that color. But it's not. I actually have to click in selection area to do that. Might just change the what of the scooter it's color here. See these little things I can quickly correct while I'm zoomed in. That's the other cool part. You don't have to be zoomed all the way in uh, when you're flatting. Just 
to the color, I'll quickly correct that. And I know it's a, a blue, so we'll choose that, or a turquoise color. How saturated do I want it to be? So, sorry, I've got my kids in the background laughing. That's always a good thing. Happy kids are good kids. As long as she's not playing her baritone. And then I can always adjust, like I said, the colors later on. Choose a nice little gray there. Come in and work this spoke. Or so all these tools and everything. I, I do have a video on my Patreon. Uh, so all the information is found in my streamer link for all my social media. You can check that out. Um, I do have how this is all set up. And, you know, there's no right or wrong way with this. Um, it's just for me, I'm just, as a comic book colorist coming over from Photoshop, I just want the same kind of functionality and look of the device and of my tool be the very similar and when it looks the same it helps me then when I'm coloring um, and I've done it both ways with uh, just dropping in in the color but it just always there's always just something about it that kind of irks me when I look at the flats and also too when I'm trying to select the same color and it's not doing that because of either tool setting or um, there might be an issue with the color that was used might have been uh, as you've seen if I select the color right now of this area here I'll mark you that that's actually going to be darker than the actual color itself so I'll show you so, you see it's totally two different colors there. This color and the original. Um, one that I had chosen, just darker, because there's still some gray set up in there. doing so much talking I would just sit and concentrate on putting in color and ripping through this as quickly as possible
past. See, like this little area right here. Don't like that. Correct that. Same thing with the seat. I really do like Clip Studio Paint for being a tool for a project to do it from start to finish. This will be the last thing I do on this scooter. Just color this mirror. Maybe I'll also make the same for oops. I'll come back to my color set. I got uh, Amia colored here. Well, this one I will zoom in just a bit because you know he's the main star. And yeah, I could, rather than sitting here, usually another quick flat tip. Uh, in Photoshop, you have to I believe hold down and shift an option. Uh, you have to first touch your tablet or Cintiq, and then hold down the shift an option. If, if you already have a selection already made, I should say. So if you already select one area, touch that and go, and you can then add to the selection. In this case, because it's clip, I can continue to add on here, which will speed up this flat. It's very helpful when you're doing this for, say, debris, windows. Um, things are going to be the same color. Really makes it go by quick. And um, as you've seen before, once I click, oops, that's her neck there, so I'm going to have to reselect that. But this area has to be selected again. So once I zoom out, and if I click the outside area here with the paint bucket in Photoshop, it automatically fills, but you have to click within the selection. And that's this is a tip if you're doing it in Photoshop or not, it's going to really help speed up your work. In this case, it's a new outfit. I do have to remember to grab her other color. So she's going to actually have some new outfits that she'll be wearing. I've created some character sheets for those artists so they can take a look and choose which one they want to do. So yeah, this may be a bit more, a bit more work than the drop-in and everything of the tool, fill bucket, or utilizing you know, reference layers. But as many of us know, you know, there's multiple ways of doing things in any tool, and um, doing it this way really does help getting that familiarity for those flat colorists or colorists coming over to Clip Studio and getting that same familiar feel uh, and workflow from one tool to another.
because like I said, I've done it both ways. I've had to go back then later on and when things don't get filled in and have to manually fill them in and get frustrated because sometimes the tool doesn't work or my understanding of the tool may not work. <laughs> So on that note, I'll probably wrap this up here, and uh, thank you guys for watching How to Do Flat using similar technique done in Photoshop in Clip Studio Paint. And you know, like I said, what I get is all my colors nice and butting up against each other. There's um, it looks like a little area I missed there, but easily correct. I don't see it there. But overall, I mean, this is typically that nice pixelated look of Photoshop that you get. And uh, stay tuned for more on my pre-launch campaign for the Wayfarer first issue. And uh, stay tuned as well for videos on how to create a custom color set and using a new tool I found that Clip has, the Quick Mask. So thanks, this is uh, Artwork by Dutch. Please remember to hit that subscribe to get notified for future videos, as well as the like button. Take care, guys. Cheers.